Howdy partners, welcome back to our second deputy training. Now remember that this time is supposed to help you realize that you have authority given to you by God himself. You can take a stand against things that try to get you off track or distracted from the call of God on your life. Now remember, we have two, count them, one, two series verses, plural, this time together. Our first one is found in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and it says, be on the alert, stand firm in the faith, act like men or women, be strong. Then our second one, my all-time favorite, is found in 1 John 4, 4, and it says, greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Now today, in today's training, we are going to be looking at our feelings. Yes, our feelings. I know you're gonna become deputies, but feelings are important and that's what we're gonna look at today, okay? So just sit up really straight and tall and pay attention to this. Now, did you know that you actually have authority over your feelings that you are the boss? Hey, what's up everyone? Mr. Andrew here and today we are gonna learn all about self-control. See, we all have feelings. Feelings are really great things that God has given us to add to our lives. See, they enhance our quality of life and actually usually help us know if something is good or bad. Now that sounds really good, right? Well, our feelings are kind of like this horse. Yes, I know, I haven't named him yet, okay? Settle down. See, horses add to our lives. They are so fun and friendly, but they really don't know how to take care of themselves or how to control themselves. They need help. Horses are super cute until they do something super crazy. Horses are amazing, but they can get into the trash. They can chew up your favorite pair of boots or even maybe destroy that outdoor patio furniture of yours. Okay, if horses are left to themselves, they can get themselves into a lot of trouble or actually even hurt. They need a lasso, that's right. Did I look really cool when I did that? <laughs> All right, well, what would happen if your horse got out of its cage or out of its fencing without a lasso? They might get into a fight with another horse or even an angry cow. We all know angry cows are mean. All right, they might even run into the street, which can be really scary and not good. See, when we put our horse on a leash, it's because we love them. We don't want them to get hurt. We need to be able to tell them just how far they can go. And feelings are the same way. They aren't bad, they just can't be our boss. If we just do what our feelings want us to do all the time, we'll end up sinning, getting hurt, or even hurting someone else. We need to put a lasso on our feelings. Now, how do we do that? We have to speak God's word over our situation and remind ourselves what God says. See, in Romans chapter 6, verse, verse 12, it says, Do not let sin control the way you live. See, feelings are not a good boss. It's kind of like this. Let's say that your parents seem to always ask you to do way more chores than your sister. And I know you've been noticing it for quite a while, but you just haven't said anything. Then one morning, your mom asks your sister to bring all the dishes to the sink. But guess what? You have to wash them all. You don't think that's fair, and it isn't. You haven't thought all the way. You have not You have been doing a lot of chores. You don't think it's been fair. You can feel it happening. Frustration is building up. Did you see that? I was getting frustrated already. Finally, you just, you just can't take it anymore. And you, and you talk back to your mom. It's not fair. So, oops, now let's pause. Is it fair if you were always asked to do way more than your sister? No, not really. Is it frustrating to be asked to, uh, to always do more? Totally. Should you talk to your mom about it? Absolutely. Should you hold it in until you lose control and yell and talk back to mom? Nope, not a chance. See, God's word says in Ephesians chapter six, verse one, children obey your parents because you belong to the Lord for this is the right thing to do. See, it's okay to get frustrated. It really is. 
But if that frustration isn't put on a lasso, it will get too far. We have to allow our frustration to be there, to get us to talk to mom. But the way we do it is the most important part. See, this lasso, it allows us to sit down and talk to mom calmly after the first time we get frustrated. We can tell mom how we feel and ask for help. We belong to God and we do the right thing. God knows what's best for us. That is having self-control. You still felt the feeling. You still want and need a solution, but you were able to tell your feelings who is the boss and how far they can go. And we found the right way to deal with that solution. So what about this? You're at your grandparents' house and you have your grandfather's chair. You're sitting on it and it's a really fun chair. It's that one that spins around. You know what I'm talking about. It spins around really, really fast. You know you're not really supposed to spin around crazy, but it's so fun. So once everyone leaves the living room, you hop on the chair and you start spinning and you start spinning and it's like you're on a ride at Six Flags and then you're dizzy, whoa. But when you get up, you feel so dizzy that you can't really walk straight and you end up bumping into a table in the living room with your grandma's favorite vase on it and, oh no, what do you do now? Now you're really scared. You were doing something you know you weren't supposed to do and that was your grandma's favorite vase. You are going to get into a lot of trouble, like a lot. See, here's the thing, grandma walks into the room then. She heard the crash, okay? What do you do? You are scared and you're fearing for your life. So you decide to tell a lie so you don't get in trouble. Now, let's pause. Was it fun to spin in the chair? Oh, yes it was. Is it normal and okay to feel scared when you might get into trouble? Totally. Should you give in to the fear and lie to your grandma? Nope. Definitely not. You have to put a lasso on your feelings. See, most of the time when we lie, it's because we are afraid. In Proverbs 12, 22, God's word says, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in those who tell the truth. Wow, that sounds extreme. I guess God really knows how much pain and trouble can come from us not telling the truth. And he loves us enough and wants us to have good lives. See, lying just ends up getting us into more trouble and in the future. And see, we have to have self-control and tell the truth. Now, telling the truth, it's not always going to keep us from consequences of our choices, but it will always keep those consequences from getting even bigger. See, our feelings are actually a gift from God. They add to our lives, but if we allow them to be the boss, they will always end up getting in trouble getting us into trouble too. See, remember Romans 6, 12 says, do not let sin control the way you live. Allow yourself to feel all your feelings, but remember to put a lasso on them so they know how far to go. That what, that's what self-control actually looks like. I hope this was a helpful illustration to show us what self-control looks like in our lives. Now, we're not going to let our feelings control us. Instead, we are going to use self-control and put a lasso on them by speaking. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna get to that in just a minute, but that brings me to my big answer for today. It says this, I can lasso my feelings and trust God's leading. Now, there are two ways that God leads us, really important. So now that we know that we don't have to let our feelings boss us around, so who should be bossing us or who should be leading us? God should be leading us. We should trust him with our outcomes. We should trust him with our life, with our story. So then how does God lead us? So there are two ways. The first way that God always leads us is in steps we can take. We are saying that the right steps equal the right destination. So if you don't know where you're going, 
there's this famous phrase that I really like. It says, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. You don't wanna get lost out on the, on the trail. You need to know where you're going, okay? So we need to hold tightly to our step, our very next step where God is calling us right now. And we need to hold lightly to our destination. We need to trust God. Our feelings, our feelings want us to focus on the what ifs on the possibility of things never changing, on the injustice or maybe the frustration that we are currently facing. But God leads us little by little and we need to be obedient or listen to God or obey God in our current step. What's up, guys? I'm Mr. Gabe. And I'm Mr. Andrew. And this is An, an epic, epic Story. Today we're talking about a guy in the Bible named Philip. Oh, wait. <laughs> is that with one L or two? One. Why? Because you can never trust a Philip with two L's. Look at llamas. Two L's, all the spit. I never trust an alfalfa with that much saliva. Don't you mean an alpaca? <laughs> I don't know. What, what are you packing for? Oh, wait, are you going somewhere summery like the beach? <laughs> or possibly... You're going somewhere cold, like the, like the mountains. Or are you going someplace cool like Europe? Because if you're going there, I think you should bring the most sophisticated European hats. Yeah, I'm gonna move on. You're moving? What am I gonna do without you? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, at least you're packed. Andrew. I'm not moving. Can we at least start the story? Oh, <laughs> thank goodness. Please continue. Philip was one of Jesus's 12 disciples. He had not just gotten a front row seat into Jesus's life, but he was also his friend. After Jesus ascended into heaven, the disciples- Wait! <laughs> I ascended the other day. You what? I ascended a football back and forth between my friends the other day. <laughs> What are you talking about? Oh, that reminds me. Did you get my package yesterday? I ascended it to you last week. <laughs> what is in this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ascend. To go up or climb. Jesus went up to heaven. Oh, so like a Jesus elevator. <laughs> uh, wait, what is happening? Where'd we go? Heaven! Andrew! What? Take us back. We aren't done with the story. Ugh, you're no fun. And... Lobby. We're here. Woo, fun. After Jesus went up into heaven, a lot of things happened to the disciples. They got filled with the Holy Spirit. Cool. A bunch of people became Christians. Awesome. And then a lot of people got really angry that the gospel was being spread, so the church started being attacked. Wait, what? Many people began to flee, and the church was scattered. Oh, <laughs> like this. Yep. Oh, man. Philip had just gone through a town doing incredible miracles in Samaria and teaching people about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. It was new that people outside of God's people, the Jews, could be adopted into God's family of believers. All the things they were doing in Samaria were really exciting. <coughs> one day while <coughs> One day while <coughs> One day while Phil <coughs> One day while Philip was there, an angel appeared to him and told Philip to go walk to this completely empty road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza at lunchtime. Uh, what? In the middle of lunchtime? No way. And Philip got up and went. Simple as that. I think this is rye bread. There's got to be some turkey in there somewhere. And Philip got up and went, Andrew. <sighs> Fine. I'm going. Mm. Oh, when Philip got to the road, he wasn't really sure why he was there or what he was doing. But after a while, he met an important Ethiopian man on his way out of Jerusalem. He'd just been on a pilgrimage. 
Ah, I shall sail across the ocean blue in 1492, riding on a whale called the Mayflower. What just happened? I'm going on a pilgrimage, duh, I'm a pilgrim. I think the pilgrims were actually in 1620, and Christopher Columbus was in 1492. Oh. But no, no, that's the point. We need to focus. <laughs> the Ethiopian man was on his way back from Jerusalem to Ethiopia, where he was in charge of all the business and money for his Queen Candace. So like her financial advisor. Yeah. Her budget guy. Yes. Her piggy bank. Wait. Or thinking. The Monopoly guy! Do not pass go! Do not collect $200! Uh, yeah. The Ethiopian man was in a carriage reading out loud from the book of Isaiah, and the Holy Spirit told Philip to find a way to join him. Wait for me! <laughs> Andrew, what was that? I was trying to get a running start to jump into the carriage! <laughs> well, he was right about one thing. Philip began running beside the man's chariot. <laughs> and next to the chariot, he could hear the man reading aloud and asked if he understood what he was reading. <laughs> I never understand what I'm reading. <laughs> the man replied, how am I supposed to understand? I don't have a tutor or someone to teach me. The Ethiopian asked Philip to come sit in the carriage with him. He read, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak for his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. No! There are children present! What kind of book are you reading from anyways? The Bible. The whole point of what the man was reading was that Philip explains that it was actually about Jesus. Oh, I get it. Philip got to share the good news of Jesus. This was an amazing opportunity he got to have because he listened to the steps God gave him. They came up to some water and the man asked to be baptized right then and there. And... I'm sorry. <laughs> and that... Andrew! And that's an epic story! Now, there are these things called outcomes, right? We sometimes think when we worry, when our feelings are bossing us around, we think that we will end up here, or that's going to cause this to happen when we get all worked up in our feelings. But if we assume, if we think we know, if we think we know where we're gonna end up, if we think we know how something's going to turn out, if we get worried because of something that might possibly happen, we can miss something. So we're saying that if we assume the outcome, that that can lead to a missed opportunity. We have to be careful not to get ahead of God by following our feelings. We have to be led by Him. That means that we need to be in a following position. It seems simple, but sometimes we get it all backwards. We think we have to get ahead of God. He doesn't need our help. We just need to follow Him and trust Him. So God can lead us in steps that we can take and God can lead us. Number two, in the way we can win. I like to win. Nobody likes to lose. Everybody likes to be winner, winner, chicken dinner, quesadilla dinner, right? Like it's really important, okay? So God will never, God will never ever ask you to do something that you are not empowered, right? Or have the ability to do. Now, that doesn't mean that things are gonna be easy. There's a reason we're doing this training, okay? Life is hard sometimes, but it will take trust and effort and walking out what God has asked of you, but you can do it with His help. When our assignment or our authority um, comes from what the world says, huh, what others expect or what we're feeling, it will change with what the world says, with what others expect or when we change our feelings. Our feelings cannot be our boss. Right? So what they do is they can move the assignment. 
They can move the path that we're on. See, Psalm 119, 105 says this, your word, God, right? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We have to be guided by God's word. God is good and his plans for you are good too. We have to trust God's leading. Now, deputies, You've done so well today. I have a challenge for each and every one of you. We have to, we have to lasso our feelings. We have to take a stand and operate in the authority God has given you over your emotions. Remember our big answer for today, I can lasso my feelings and trust God's leading. Trust God. Trust God with your future and your outcomes. He has good plans for you. Be guided by his word and you will always, always reach the right destination because of 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world.